Dean Ripa is considered to be one of the top herpetologists in the world. For over 30 years, he has performed field research in over 35 countries. Dean captured snakes in the wild and returned with his catch in an era when the act of doing so was practically unheard of. Arguably, he has collected more different kinds of venomous snakes from the wild from more different countries than anyone living. One of the rarest of these is the Bushmaster, which carries the most lethal bite of any known viper. One Costa Rican study recorded an 80% fatality rate even with antivenom. Once considered a single species, Dean Ripa's research led to the revelation that the Bushmaster is actually four separate and distinct species with one subspecies. He was the first person to breed and reproduce two of these species in captivity and maintains the largest breeding colony of Bushmasters in the world. Dean Ripa was the first person to observe Bushmaster sexual behavior and the first to record their unique courtship ritual, as well as male-to-male -male combat. Dean Ripa has seen and treated more Bushmaster bites than any physician, living or dead, all on his own person. At bite number seven, he has personally experienced more Bushmaster envenomings than anyone in medical history. We're going to start with the longest species of viper in the world, the Bushmaster. Bushmaster is the world's longest viper. It reaches a length of 12 feet. In one Costa Rican study, Bushmasters had killed 80% of their victims, even with antivenom. Being a very long snake, it can strike very far. A 12-foot Bushmaster lying flat on the ground could strike you right in the face. Now these snakes are pit vipers. This does not mean they live in a pit underground. It means they have heat-sensitive pits and under their eyes and with these pits they detect the warmth of their prey. They can find a little animal in total darkness just by feeling the heat given off by its body and accurately chase it and strike it. Your hand is about the size of a rat, your foot is about the size of a rat, and to a Bushmaster out hunting, you present much the same thermal target as their natural prey. And this is the reason I believe Bushmasters have been implicated in so many unprovoked attacks on humans, because they simply get mixed up. They think we are food, and they rush out after us just as though we were a rat. So let's get started and show you how Bushmasters feed. There's three Bushmasters in here, one in this log, and two over there, and I see one already eyeballing me. Ooh. He's just embedding those inch-long fangs deep into that rat's body and pumping in enormous quantities of venom, enough to kill about 10 people. Being bitten by a Bushmaster is like being struck by a car. Within minutes, one is literally knocked down by the venom. There is none of the delay of other snake bites. The symptoms come on you full throttle almost at once. What does it feel like? Well, I suppose you could say it was like a combination of being set on fire, stabbed with a dagger, and then beaten with a sharp, hard stick. Dittmers records death in under 10 minutes from Panama. There's no walking down out of the jungle to seek medical help. You can't move after a few minutes and don't want to either. The pain is so intense your teeth chatter. Then your blood pressure falls away to nothing, and ultimately, you die of shock. What does a Bushmaster feel like? You find it amazingly sharp. It feels as rough as a wood rasp. It could almost cut your fingers. In fact, I think it would cut your fingers if you pressed hard enough. And this is the Costa Rican Bushmaster, probably the darkest colored one of the, uh, of the four kinds. It is, however, probably the deadliest of the bunch, at least as far as the record's uh, fatality per uh, bite. Uh, this one seems to have killed uh, more people per bite than any other. 
These snakes are found only in undisturbed rainforests. You have to go very, very f deep into the jungle to find a Bushmaster. Uh, you may have to walk for, for weeks or even months before you would actually find one. And, of course, if the rat were alive, as I say, he'd be fighting and kicking and the Bushmaster would be holding on. I would suspect right now that between the two of these, there's enough venom being ejected to kill about 20 people. There's no way to walk. Ooh, look at those fangs. Wow. Uh, sniff. This other one is going to sniff around until he finds the head in, but his uh, smarter friend there is already sucking it down. Hopefully they won't fight over the rat. Because then I'll have to get some member of the crowd to volunteer to get them apart. Now you'll notice in this shot that we are peeling off of the dry, unshed skin off of this Bushmaster. In the north here, especially in the winter, where we have the heat on, it dries them out. They just don't get the proper humidity here in America that they would get in a tropical rainforest and this makes the, uh, the shedding of their skin more difficult for them. Normally we rain on them and moisten them, but if we should lapse uh, in that even by a day or so, it, they will end up with a, with a poor skin shed. Now here's something interesting. This is thermal head bobbing. It's reported in my book. The snake is bobbing its own head so it can sight the prey by infrared vision. Here I am in Costa Rica looking for the rarest of all the Bushmasters, the black-headed Bushmaster. It's, a, it's considered also to be the most uh, aggressive of the bunch, and I can definitely confirm that in captivity these snakes will chase you. But the uh, reason I believe that, that this most uh, occurs is simply as a uh, feeding response. They, they don't rely on their eyesight to catch their prey, but on their uh, thermal detective abilities, and so they they, they uh, get confused, they think the uh, human being is, is dinner, and they rush out after them and bite them in the same way they would write, bite prey. And uh, because it's not an aggressive or defense reaction, uh, they, give, uh, they give a lot of venom in these bites, and, uh, and that, that also may contribute to the high fatality from this snake. Now we've got just about as many snakes in the back of the Serpentarium off exhibit as we do on display. And this is a South American Bushmaster, uh, and he's very intent on getting this uh, little rat here. He's going to chase it right across the floor, and I reckon I could lead him right on out into the gift shop if I wanted to. He's so intent on uh, any biting any warm object, including your hand. They're very dangerous creatures for that reason, uh, and they will chase people. Now you'll see the venom glands here on either side of the head, surprisingly small for a a viper, and the, uh, the fangs are amazingly large. They are about uh, an inch in length. And he's disengaging them. You'll see the uh, gaping wound on the left and the little black dot on the right where the fangs penetrated the rat's carcass, and already the uh, venom is, is having an effect on the, uh, the composition of the tissue. And when we're all done, we pop them back in the container, and off he goes into the uh, off-exhibit area where we keep uh, so many more Bushmasters. In fact, about 60 of them right now. Now, this is the black-headed Bushmaster. That's probably the most aggressive of the bunch. It's the rarest of all the Bushmasters. It's the only one that has this jet black head. And we, of course, move the snakes about as gently as possible on hooks, and we have to support their bodies also with our hands so we don't hurt them. He's a young one. He's only about two and a half years old, but he's already uh, more than six feet in length. Very nervous and much more dangerous than the other Bushmasters. Very eager to bite you. As you see him twitching about there, and he's feeling the heat off of the lights at this moment. He's vibrating his tail, posed to strike. And you see what a handsome fellow he is. He's real big. 